Is it afternoon yet? No, it's still morning. Barely. No, it's 12.02. Shoot. Good afternoon. <laughs> Put my hoodie on. <laughs> That's why I've been all morning. It's cold out this morning. <laughs> uh, we'll give people a minute or two to get in here. There's probably a commercial at the beginning or something they have to watch. Hey, Cosmos. Him and Brandon are like always first. <laughs> hey, Troy. There's Dave. Dave that was just here the other day helping us out. Two feathers. I haven't seen him say hi for a while. Andy, Lewis. Howdy. Stays <laughs> at Stacy Wilcox. Yep. He's my buddy. Oh. He's got an eagle. Oh, cool. Suburban eagle. Well, thank you. <laughs> so we got a lot done on that thing in the last uh, almost two weeks. I, I really thought it was going to be a super easy project. Not, you know, just a couple, couple air leaks, a couple oil leaks. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have definitely should have not said that. Um, where do we want to start? Well, we had, uh, what was our final count? We were, the last time I talked to you, we were at 26 air leaks. And that was before we, that's not Found counting. the ones yesterday. That's not counting the wipers or the air step that's still leaking. And, but we got it down to what, two pounds a minute? Yep, a little bit less than two pounds, about one and a half. Okay, so, so we're within DOT specs now. <laughs> But she still, uh, she'll still leak off. The, and that's the stuff that's left to do is, is probably stuff I can do myself. It's a lot easier to get to than the other stuff that we've been. So the, the biggest air leak that's on there still is that air step. He's got a step that comes out with his door. And when it's retracted, it leaks. But when it's all the way out, it doesn't. Or if it does, it's just a tiny, yeah, tiny if bit. if it's out. It's just, if you, if you try to leave it out going down the road, the light will be on. And then of course, if you get into tight space, you tear it off. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to leave it out, but it's not a horrible leak, but it, that is the largest leak of what is still on there. Uh, and then the air wipers are just finicky on their own. They'll start leaking a lot. And if you fidget with them, you can get them to mostly stop. Yeah, They but... probably need new uh, seal kits for the air cylinders, but I may do like what you suggested and the main line that runs to them, just put a valve on it that I can shut on and off when I actually want to use the wipers. Yeah. Which is not real often, so. Can deal with that. And I think the level, there's a leveling valve. I've replaced two out of the three leveling valves on it. And the one that I didn't replace Still on the driver's side rear is leaking. It's not leaking horrible, but it's definitely losing air after we shut it off. It's leaking from the arm where the arm goes into the, it's, not, it's nothing we can tighten or anything. That's just, it's it's just the, a seal in there. Yeah. Um, That's not too bad of a fix. It's kind of hard to get to. I have to probably take the wheels back off to get it. And but then his suspension was in terrible shape, and he didn't even realize, I don't think, that it was that bad. No. <laughs> and that was probably the hardest work that we did. The most physical labor, I think, was those radius rod bushings, especially the rear ones. When you're having to lay in a place like this and work with a 30 pound impact over your head, plus the <laughs> torque that it's putting out on a bolt that doesn't want to budge. And, and we broke what? We broke two sockets <laughs> on a three quarter drive. Yep. And spent three and a half hours breaking those sockets and it still hadn't budged. <laughs> I think a great day to go to service calls and lances. So, yeah, I put a 20 ton jack under the three quarter inch breaker bar to try to get the breaker bar to, to do it. And the, it didn't. It, it laughed at you. <laughs> <laughs> we tried the uh, power. Did we try the porta press? Yeah, porta power. Uh, bent it. it. <laughs> bent it. And we finally got a uh, one inch impact from Harbor Freight. I had to get the, the right angle. A pistol, smaller. a pistol grip one. Yeah, he. We had the, the one inch tire gun, that's like you know two foot long or whatever it is. I brought that with me, but and it wouldn't. It fit. wouldn't fit in there because of the differential and everything. So we went and we've got this the Harbor Freight pistol grip one. Dan's gonna get it and show it here. It's a one inch drive, um, 
and it instantly got got the bolt off. Ten seconds and it was off. That one there. So I was really surprised. I didn't think it was going to do it because on paper it's about the same numbers as the Milwaukee, um, but I think the Milwaukee's getting a little tired on the high end side of it. So, uh, but thank goodness with the half inch air hose and that it, it got it off. So we had the uh, replaced two airbags in the back. And there were several valves that were leaking, brake lines. We replaced, what, three brake lines, Tyler? Yeah. The DD3 chambers, that whole fiasco. Hand me those pieces, Tyler. The, rubber, the, the other little pieces are in, it's probably inside that. Oh, I've got them in my hand right here. Yeah, there's, one, there's one more little chunk in the thing there. But I think they'll get the point. Yeah, but I don't know if you watched, but the DD3s used to have these little metal rings that were on them. And somebody on his old ones had tried to pry it off or get it off, which I guess it is a separate part number. It, they just get fused to there, but somebody just completely disintegrated and these metal pieces were inside between the bellows the, or the, the diaphragms inside the brake chambers. Um, it was just horrible. Shrapnel. It was. There were also loose bolts. The cans weren't <clears throat> the, the clamshells. So his, yeah, and he had, he had a hole in the diaphragm and, and other stuff too. That was, that was crazy. And his radius rod bushings, there was nothing left of those Several of them, the the two on the rear on the on the back. Now, when I cleaned up yesterday evening, out of the two radius rod bushings that we changed on the driver's side, there was about three pieces of rubber that fit in the palm of my hand. That's what was left of them <laughs> that I picked up and threw in the trash. <laughs> oh man! So the oil leaks, we had what a uh, the blower, rear seal on the blower. And the, the valve cover gasket leak that had a bunch of wires loom wedged in it for years. You've never taken that valve cover off, right? Mm -hmm. So you've owned it for four years. It's been on there like that. So oil was going into my valley and just running all over the motor on down the front and the back and the sides of it. So you just never could tell where the oil was coming from. And the, the, by, the blower bypass was uh, the O-ring on that. Somebody had permatexed it and that was causing, that was a leak on there too everything on the back end of the blower, the end plates, um, the blower had to come out uh, and get new, new gaskets set all over the blower. Uh, and then he had a major power steering fluid leak that somebody had really, really rigged up. Were you responsible for that? <laughs> no, uh, we actually didn't find that until <laughs> yesterday evening. Uh, it was an O-ring in there that was supposed to be replaced and they did, instead of taking the piece off like you did and putting the new O-ring on it, they just permatex the vent <laughs> so it wouldn't come out except the Permatex finally gave way after. It was a big plug. Is that plug over there, Tyler? It's on that table if you want to grab it. On the power steering pump, there's a, yeah, there's a little pressure regulator. But for them, it's just, it's a, it's a round little disc that you see from the outside with a pin going across it. And somebody had put a big plug of Permatex in it, and, but it, you have to take it out. There's an O-ring in there, and that's what was leaking was the O-ring. Now, we did just put a generic O-ring on there. I recommend you order the right one and uh, swap it out with the correct one that might fit it's a little a bit better. now that the pin can go through both ends. Yeah, so, but it's, it's, uh, it's not leaking now, but I don't know how long that's going to last. You should get the yeah. correct. It wasn't exactly 100%, but it, it was just from the generic O-ring kit that I had. And then... Uh, we took it for a test drive today, and how did the te first test drive go? The first test drive I thought was good. Uh, the ride is definitely way improved. We hit the bridge down there, and the only thing rattling was the TV over my head, <laughs> which always rattles. <laughs> and uh, it used to give you big loud bangs because the, the big radius loud rods. Bangs, would... I could feel it in the steering wheel. Just uh, <laughs> felt like the whole steering wheel had an inch of play back and forth to each side, and that's gone. Um, so we didn't replace any shocks on it. They were still decent. Yep. Um, so power wise, I didn't really notice anything different on the first test drive, but we found out that the, so he doesn't have, he doesn't have a boost gauge on the dash. So he has no idea how much boost he's getting. So we took the D it's a D deck two. So we took the, the scanner with us and we, I was reading the diagnostics while we were going and I don't, we never got over like 13 pounds of boost. 13.5 was like as high as it got on the way back. Which is low. We, and so we were concerned about that. We knew that the turbo had some, it was really dirty when we took it apart. It has a little bit of play. It's not touching the housing yet. So we were kind of concerned that there might be turbo issues in the future for him. How much you know boost he should be getting and what he was getting. 
And then Tyler checked the throttle position sensor on the, the D-Deck reader, and the maximum throttle was 74.6 or 70, 74. 74. with the full throttle all the way to the floor. So he wasn't getting anywhere near full throttle on his bus, ever. <laughs> so we got in there looking at the throttle pedal and what was going on with it, and there's no adjustment on it. Um, but we got in there with a grinder, and we're, we're, it had a physical stop that it got to, and we just cut this cut out a big chunk so now it goes all the way step on it it goes to 100 percent percent yeah and then you got to take it for another test drive <laughs> yeah that was uh kind of rocket power when, when, we, when we got to go on the only reason i didn't go faster is because scott was hanging on for dear life in the stairwell. <laughs> i i was oh we've, on the, the first test drive he came up the hill at 22 miles an hour I don't they have, is there an official record so far? <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't even with my full power. That doesn't either. count. You that doesn't stop. count. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't come from a stop. He was already doing probably 20 mile an hour before he <laughs> got through the stop well, sign. And, and then we found out that the door wasn't latched. Yeah, the door wasn't latched. I was, I, I was holding out of the camera with one hand and the D-deck reader with the other. So I was just, my elbow was kind of holding me in place. And I felt like the floor was armor all. My feet were slipping and he's <laughs> bouncing and... And then it's a good time. Yeah, he was going so fast. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, then he, you know, now that it's getting full boost, the acceleration is is greatly improved on it. He, he's never had it like that. So, I th uh, what what was the uh, how many 50, 54 thousand gallons of diesel is what the D deck says has gone through his bus. I wish I had all that money. Fifty four thousand <laughs> gallons in the lifetime of the bus. That is an awesome number. Six and a half miles to the gallon average, and that's only going to go down. Six, yeah, six and a half miles uh, per gallon. It was the average fuel economy on it, too, which is definitely going to go down now that he's got that's, full throttle. That's not bad, considering the generator has probably ran most of that time that the that the motors ran. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the acceleration was definitely better when we pulled out onto the highway. I might have been going 60 and a 30. I can't <laughs> say for sure. <laughs> might have been. Now that my speedometer is fixed. Oh, yeah, we fixed the speedometer. The, um, I forgot what it sensor. is. The sensor uh, for the wheel had met with the, <laughs> the, the tire of the rim, uh, the brake drum before. The bracket the fell off. And it had been replaced before. Oh, and then this morning, um, we had a really weird thing with the bus. We, we started up and the idle was all over the place. It would idle up, it'd go 600, it'd go 800, it'd go 1,000, it'd go 600. It was- Should've 1,600 for a minute. Yeah, it'd go up really, really high. And then, uh, yeah, it, it first started yesterday. We, we, when we fir fired up for the first time, we didn't understand what was going on. We didn't mess with anything electronically on the engine. No, nothing should have changed whatsoever. All we, we removed the blower, put the blower back on. We only unplugged one sensor, which is the boost sensor. Everything else we just moved to the side. Um, but if you remember that, those wires, the way we fixed it this morning is we got in there and that wire loom that had been smashed in the valve cover for years, um, I was like, that's the only thing wiring wise that, that possibly could be doing it. And I, I split that open and kind of separated those wires and pulled them in there and then it idled perfectly. We've not had that, an issue with it again since then. It, it's yeah, instantly smoothed it out. Sounds good, other than them brittle wires. <laughs> so I, I, I don't really know what it was doing or why it was doing it, but. It did that up until the point where we messed with that those wires. That one wire loom that was under the valve cover for who knows how many years. Man, it's cold. We should have sat in the sun. I don't know yeah, somebody thinking. just said it looks like we're freezing. That's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting right in front of the breezeway, too. Yeah. That might, might not have been a good idea. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and, and my brakes are way better. They feel better. We had done wheel bearings and brakes, what, two years ago? Yep. And, you know, we got the brakes adjusted good then. I've only put a couple thousand miles on it since then, but they just, the response and the pedal just feel, it feels stronger now than it's ever been. And that's probably those DD3 cans they were leaking off so bad. Yep. And, uh, well, I don't know that you were ever 120 PSI or, you have so many air leaks. <laughs> the air leaks were pretty bad. On the way down here, I actually, I told you I got fuel, and then I literally from 
just releasing the parking brake and idling around the parking lot to the stop sign, I was down to 90 pounds. And I had been in there idling for 10 minutes. You know, it had, it should have had 110, 120 when I started, you know? Yeah. So big difference. So you're heading from here to Oklahoma, right? Going to Oklahoma. I'm going to probably say, be out there. Do you want to say by, what town you're going to? Maybe somebody will have a spot. Uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Um, Looking at a couple campgrounds out there, um, I know a few people, but I don't have anywhere to park other than a campground out there that I could get power and hookups. So if anybody knows of anything that I don't, feel free to say hey. But I'll be out there sometime tomorrow afternoon. The one I'm looking at going to doesn't check in until 5 o'clock, so I've got, you know, quite a bit of time to get there. Do we have any questions on there, Tyler, that we need to? Uh, somebody was asking what the temperature was. It's, it's like 40. 45. I don't, wind. Yeah, 45 with a wind chill of like 35. Cosmos said uh, he loves Tom's the new song. Oh. I saw that. Thank you, Cosmos. <laughs> that was a surprise, that a last-minute surprise that I threw in there for Scott on the kind of the rally, you know, all that stuff going on. I thought it would be something cool. Well, said congratulations on getting out of the shop. He knows your pain. <laughs> feel, well, I haven't got the bill yet, so I, I may be stuck here while washing dishes. <laughs> I use paper plates. <laughs> uh, Bo also said, FYI, all his airbags are still up. Oh, good. But that's it. If anyone wants to post questions now. Okay, yeah. Get them. Post your questions all in caps. If you do that, it makes it easier for them to stand out for us to catch them. the next project uh we have this crown over here that we're working on we got the wheels off of it and getting into um i'm gonna pan over dan that bus there that dan's standing in front of the wheels <laughs> dan's a permanent resident here right now for for a little while oh there's sun hey <laughs> <laughs> yes very cold <laughs> <laughs> I can turn the heater on, but no one will be able to hear. Yeah, well, we don't want that. Are you going to do doors on the shop? Uh, at some point. I don't know what I'm going to do, though. Uh, it's going to be a little while. But I think once we get the windows just came in for the sh for the for the apartment, so we got to get them installed. But once we get the windows in, hopefully this week, that'll at least stop the air from flowing straight through the building. I think that'll make a big improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I get the drywall up on this other wall too, that'll make a big improvement. And then. Uh, Maybe I'll hook up some tarps or something for the winter just to, just to have. But yeah, the the the, the two, the the last quote I got for a garage door was fifty thousand dollars just for the door. That, that didn't include an opener or, or anything like that. So who was that? Stacy said Tim was going to get you uh, his number. Yeah, Stacy's got an eagle that I'm sure he needs to have some stuff done. Stacy plays uh, bluegrass as well. Oh, cool. He's up in uh, around Akron, Ohio. Cool. Uh, we changed the coolant on the bus. Put the right coolant in there. I had the, <laughs> the wrong in there. When I got it, it had water, so it was a little bit of an improvement over water. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently in Texas, we don't need antifreeze. <laughs> anybody has any questions for Hank Hill, he's also here too with us. <laughs> uh, Dave wants to know if you have room in the shop for him to stop late next week, probably Friday, to drop off his 1892. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get it in. I can go next, next to something. Or it'll, yes. Yeah. Have you heard from the beginning this morning? No, last time I talked to him, he, things were going well, and they were in Washington, but that was like weeks before he'd, uh, it's probably been a month, so. Dave said great, thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy the sun for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the shade, I think, back here. You can snuggle with me if you yeah. really want to. <laughs> it doesn't come off the bill, though. <laughs> it doesn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kelly's gone. But, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, I'm trying to think of what else we did. Oh, we had a great a tire fiasco yesterday. Um, he when he got new front tires, he mm -hmm. also bought a new rim because he had a rim that kept leaking down. He put new tire on it, and it was still the tire was on leaking the, on down. On the rear end side, which was hard to get to, so that's why it was still on there, and I was still dealing with it. So I took the rim up with the tire yesterday before we put it back on. I thought I'd switch rims at the tire shop. Took it up there, got it mounted. 30 bucks later, brought it back, go to put it on. Scott says, hey, it's the wrong rim. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> it was a hub pilot, not a not a, uh, a stud pilot rim. <laughs> so it wasn't going to work. So back to the tire shop we went, and <laughs> Tyler appreciated that, getting to load that tire. How many times was it? Four altogether? <laughs> I guess it would be. No. Eight. Eight? Eight times in and out of the back of the truck because I had to take... The tire there, drop it off, pick it up, come back. Oh, I guess it's four. <laughs> it seemed like a lot. It felt like eight. <laughs> so the only good part of it was the tire shop did not charge me for the second dismount and remount. They just stuck with the uh, 30 bucks that they charged me at the beginning of the day. And felt sorry for you. Yeah, they felt sorry for, probably more for Tyler watching him out there loading that up. So that was o Owens Tire in Centerville, Tennessee. So definitely thank them for that. That was uh, Check them out. They always have good customer service for things like that. I uh, Certainly they should have not done that for free, That was, but uh, that was very nice of them to do that. That's a lot of work. If you've ever mounted and dismounted a truck tire, it's not fun. I'd say they've probably been watching your videos and just felt sorry for me. <laughs> Do all DD3s have a metal plate on the diaphragms? No, they don't anymore. I mean, they, Nothing. yeah, yeah. The, the newer style diaphragms don't require that. That was, that was the old school stuff. How hard is it to hook up a regular roll gauge on an eagle? Uh, two wires. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be hard at all. Plus and minus. <laughs> George is in the chat, by the way. Oh, hey, George. Have you thought about putting slide outdoors like you put on barns? Yeah, kind of. Uh, Kelly doesn't want anything goes out, slides out past the end of the building. That's the deal. So if, if we do put sliders, which is probably the way we're leaning right now, we'll have them where they stack multiple ways, and they can either all go to the left or all go to the right. But, you know, they won't go beyond the end of the building. Someone wants to know what's the name of the solar place in Charleston. Uh, well, Santan Solar, they're not in Charleston, they're in Savannah, Savannah Georgia, so, yeah. Yeah, that's where they just opened. They just opened a new, so that's the place where I got all my solar panels, but they were in Gilbert, Arizona. They opened another, an East Coast store that's in Georgia now, so S-A-N-T-A-N -S -S -A -A Solar. Have you thought of setting up and making your own hoses? Yeah, um, especially after watching the hose guy do it, but uh, buying the machine and everything would be quite a bit. There's um, a lot of money that goes into it. That and, and storage and all that too. So it's not going to happen for a long time if we do it, but eventually someday that'd be nice and convenient to have that service in house. The one place is like, what, 10 minutes down the road? Yeah. So. Yeah, well, there's two places here in town that make them, and uh, one of them's definitely more affordable than the other, but it's still an inconvenience to go back and forth if they don't always carry the stock or the sizes that we have. And if they can't do it, you're stuck driving an hour because someone can't. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Ah, so. Trying to think what else on your bus we did. Mmm. Brady's rod pushing us. Yeah, we talked about that. That was that was hard, hard work. Especially because the the rear axle was was not even in alignment at all because the pushing was gone, so by the time we went to put the new one on, we had to move that axle back about an inch. The entire fan set up Oh yeah, the fans. Oh, that was huge. <laughs> that was a big job. <laughs> Pulling out those blower motor, those, so those fans that are on the top, that are the squirrel cage fans, that's the radiator fan, so that sucks the air through the radiators and then blow, blows it out down, and uh, he had a seal that was bad on that that was destroying his engine with oil. It was, it was that was a horrible leak. It, Most it, oil ever. It made a, uh, the worst mess because it was like 80, 90 weight.
dumping on top of the Detroit, which was already leaking yeah, oil. Yeah, it was leaking out of the seal <laughs> and literally going through the fans on the driver's side and just blowing straight down from the top of the motor. It was so bad. It was the worst. <laughs> And I just power washed it before I left Indianapolis. And it was horrible looking yeah. when it got here. <laughs> it was it was disgusting. Um, so that the miter box came out, and there was a seal kit for that that you got from Luke. Was yep, it? Luke at US Coach. And we pulled that apart. Getting the fan blades off required a hub puller. I had to, we broke a we broke a hub puller that we had. I had to buy a great big huge one. Um, I got ordered off Amazon and then we waited a couple days to get that in and then it came apart pretty easy once we had the right size industrial. And we ripped an entire bolt out of it too. Well, yeah, we ripped bolt. the threads out of a, like a 7 16 bolt or something like that. Yeah, grade eight, just ripped it right, that's how much they were really on there. And we heated them with the, man, we used a torch a lot on your bus. <laughs> and the welder. And the welder? Yeah, oh, the broke welded the turn signal back together with that Harbor Freight titanium welder. I think yeah, I did was, a good job. I was tracing air leaks. I was doing all the air leaks on the inside of the cabin there. And I had to pull some panels off to get to some of the older airlines and spraying the fittings down. And when I put everything back together and literally went to get out of the driver's seat, I bumped it with my knee in it. You know, somebody said yesterday, well, don't use it as a pry bar. Well, I did, and I literally, it came off in my hand. <laughs> I was like, well, that's a, that's a great thing to have with, with, on top of all the other stuff. That, that welder did a great job, though. It did. For it, that. I was, perfect. Uh, that, that'll probably last forever. It'll outlast the bus. <laughs> and then, yeah, he riveted up all the, some of, there was a bunch of rivets that had come out on the, the housings for the shrouds for the fans. Yeah, probably about 15 or 18 rivets. I replaced all together and got that thing. I didn't want to ever have to take it out again. <laughs> so I figured while it was out, it was easy to get to. Because you got to stand on your head to get to anything in there just to check the, it's kind of a rough design. It's a rough design here. Cool it fills in a location where you can't actually see. The emergency. <laughs> so if you got an emergency, that's what you want to do is get on top of the ladder and <laughs> climb up there where the yourself. bus is hot. Right. <laughs> So there was that, replaced a fuel line that was hard to get to while we had the blower off and the, the uh, It I was crispy because it, it mounts right under the turbo. I mean, it's like yeah. an inch away from the exhaust side of the turbo. And it was leaking anyway. <laughs> so we replaced that while it was out and easy to get to. Replaced a few power steering. Was it the fill hose that goes from the... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I couldn't get it off. I had to cut it off to get it off the bus. That's right. But it was horrible. It was crispy. <laughs> the brake lines are, I think we're going to hang them up on the wall in Scott's shop next to, I think Bo gets the, he, he gets a few of his hung up. <laughs> the, what'd you call them, brake, brake pipes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel like there is still more stuff that we did on your bus, too, that we're not even mentioning. Mm, just so many, so many air leaks. The air leaks, the air system and the oil leaks. Oh, air governor got replaced. Oh, yeah, we put a new yeah. air governor on it. New valve cover gaskets. Valve yeah, cover new valve gasket. cover gaskets. That one valve cover gasket was completely destroyed from where it had pinched the, that wire harness for years in there. Someone said, are you changing from Hey Lance to Hey Tom? I, I did get a Hey Lance like within 45 minutes of when we first started Monday two weeks ago. It's okay, the turbo was fine. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking turbo when I came here. But, you know. Oh boy. Well, I'm, I'm happy that we found that, that throttle position sensor issue and uh, that now you're gonna have so much more throttle response. Uh, you have enough brakes now to let you have the throttle. And yeah, and, and yeah. You can go in. So. <laughs> You're probably lucky that it was only. Yeah, I, I definitely wasn't. Uh, I left a lot of diff, uh, distance following <laughs> people coming down here because I just. That's still a good practice. It, 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 I, I've always done that anyway with all the buses. Not so much in the trucks because. You know, it's a little different animal. 
But uh, you get yelled at a few times if you're driving. I've, I've driven several entertainer coaches, and if anybody's, you never know when someone's up walking around. <laughs> So I've got yelled at a few times for using it. One guy told me, don't use the brakes. That was exactly what he told me. I was like, okay, sounds fair enough. So you're the opposite. I would just brake check people every time I saw them walking around. Yeah. Well, my, my buddy, uh, my partner, uh, that we bought this, bought this bus together, um, he used to do that. He was actually driving Bobby Osborne, the guy that uh, sang Rocky, Rocky Top. Top. He was driving him down to Florida one time, and he kept brake checking him. Every, he'd see him up there walking around back here, and you know Bobby's kind of ornery. He's, <laughs> he's getting up there in years, and uh, Bobby told his son, Bobby Jr. He said, uh, "I'll say it nicely instead of how he said, it, tell him to quit blanking doing that." <laughs> so uh, yeah, he thought it was funny, but he got yelled at. <laughs> It is definitely cold out. It is. It ain't getting any warmer, is it? I, I think it this, is. this is the coldest other than that first day, I think. No, I think this is the coldest day this year. Really? Yeah, I don't think it's getting warmer than this. Okay. I think oh, it yeah, it was like 50. Warmer this morning when I walked down the hill. Because mm -hmm. you were moving. Maybe that's I just it. remember the, fir the first day when we had the heater going most of the day. Other than that, we didn't really have that heater going at all. So just that first day. It's sitting right next to me. I want to plug it in so bad. I know. <laughs> We're staring at a torpedo heater, but not running it because you won't be able to hear us. So while we had the wheels off, we went ahead and greased everything and adjusted all the brakes. And so nothing was out too horrible, I guess. Mm -mm. Everything looked real good. The hub, no, none of the hubs were leaking, which that was a problem that he had before. He had a whole bunch of leaky hub seals and all that, all that held up good. And that was nice. Got all the wheels torqued. So I guess if I've learned, I already knew all this, but if anybody that's looking at buses right now, don't worry about what they look like. <laughs> that's, that's the least thing that you should be worried about. What's inside them, you know, how pretty they are, what kind of paint they have. Don't worry about any of that because you're going to end up spending more trying to get it in shape, you know, to be safe going down the road. All that stuff can come later. That's, that should be secondary. You know, we bought this bus sight unseen, which I will never do again. That was, that was a huge lesson that I learned. Because if I had bought it, you know, we way overpaid for it. Because, you know, I feel like nothing's really been touched on here up until the last couple of years. But there was about 15 years worth of sitting where this thing didn't have probably any maintenance done to it. So. That's why it's in the shape that it was in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, according to the previous owner, it was ready to go. He'd been driving it around, found no issues. It was located, you know, 1,200 miles away from where we lived. So I took a chance and uh, flew my business partner down there to pick it up with a check. And uh, that's probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. So definitely, if you're looking at buses, crawl under them or get somebody if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so don't buy them sight unseen on eBay days before you're supposed to be in Never. Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> Never. That's what I did. <laughs> but I wasn't planning on driving that bus. I just needed to get it. And then you drove it cross country. And then I did. Yeah. But maybe, maybe Scott will back me up on this. You know, even this crown that just come in, I mean, pulling the wheels off, you can learn so much by... Even, even not even pulling the wheels off, just getting where you can get up there with a good flashlight, seeing if there's leaks in the hub seals, axle seals, any of that. See what the brake shoes look like. Look at the radius. Most of these buses have radius rod bushings. Those are usually pretty easy to see on at least the lower ones. King pins, tie rod ends. The shocks, you can tell if they're leaking. If they have oil on them, you know they're probably shot. Yeah. Stuff like that. I old mean, old tires, old rubber tires, old tires. <laughs> if you can park a bus in the cracks in your tires, please get tires. <laughs> yeah, people don't think. I mean, that's four grand, five grand to do a set of tires. It tires is. over ten years. I mean, over ten years old. Even if you're only going twenty or thirty miles, I don't. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know. As soon as they get hot, you run a risk of them just coming apart. 
Yeah, people don't think about how expensive. Uh, you, you, even if you, the guys that buy a bus for five thousand dollars, most of the time they got to put ten thousand dollars into it just to get it on the road. Say by the time you put tires on it, like I said, four or five grand for tires. Probably needs airbags too. You don't want an airbag blown out when you're going down the road. Uh, er everything adds up, and it's a big, big expense. It's it's not hard at all to to drop, you know, fifteen thousand dollars in maintenance into a bus. Somebody just asked, should you get DOT inspection? <clears throat> I actually saw a couple of them for sale this week that that were claiming to have uh, DOT current mm -hmm. DOT registrations. I mean, honestly, if you're just buying a shell, it's worth it. You know, because they can't, they're not going to pass the inspection with all that stuff going on like what mine had going on. Yeah. And if you can get one like that, that's your major expense as long as the motor runs good and the transmission is solid. To me, you can build it however, you can take years to build it, but if you take it out and kill somebody, you ain't going to have a chance to, you know. Well, Robbie and them, they took their bus to a shop to get it inspected, and they said the airbags were all good and this and that, all that other well, stuff, and true. they were terrible. They, I but that wasn't necessarily a DOT, you know, inspection, but I guarantee you that shop that they went to does DOT inspections. So what would be any different, you know, it's the same mechanics that are looking at it who should have known those airbags are not good. They were all leaking and rusted and, and horrible. And um, I mean, I'm not gonna get into it right now because I, I preach about it a lot. I, you know, about, because RVs are so, they're exempt from pretty much so everything in most states. Very, very few states have any regulations to them whatsoever. You can have any driver's license. You don't have to have an air brake endorsement. You don't, uh, you don't have to have annual inspections done on it. So we see a lot of things that come in that are pretty sketchy. Don't ruin that exemption for all of us, though. <laughs> hey, uh, we're not doing a good job of self-regulating ourselves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, if people don't pay attention, we're going to lose that exemption. Yeah. Don't ruin it for the rest of us. Um, speaking of buses that had a lot of work, Art, Art sent me a message yesterday that his Eagle that we got, remember his rear end was way out of alignment and, the, and everything. And we got in there with a tape measure and he said, now that we adjusted it, the rear end alignment was still out three thirty seconds of an inch. So I think we did pretty good with our tape. Three thirty seconds for tape measuring on a floor with a bent rod. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I, I called that a win. I was like, yeah, I knew it still needed to get done precise with lasers at a shop. But I, I when he said three thirty seconds, I was, uh, I mean, There's no inch number in front of that. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was way out. Um, God, that hurt. Yeah, so that that was nice. No, you pulled your awning out for the first time. Yeah, we we actually got. I don't know if you can see in. Yeah, you can see in the picture the awning. The I had never had that thing out. I was kind of afraid of it to be honest. I just. Uh, <laughs> I could just picture it once I start messing with it, it comes out on me going down the road and then there I sit. But uh, good old Dan there, he talked me into it and we got it pulled out. It only had what, a couple little holes in it? Tiny little holes, yeah, and, uh, Pin pinholes. It was actually pretty nice. I hung out under it for a day or so while it was still raining. But going back to what I said a while ago, I kind of thought about this. Almost all this stuff that I brought the bus down here for, I'm not saying I could do it myself, but a lot of the inspection part of it, I could do it myself. I just, I don't think I had the confidence before I came here to do it. You know, I just, it's thinking about, I guess because there was so much of it to do, it was a little overwhelming to think about. But you know, once we got started on it, I mean, I was kind of jumping on stuff and, um, kind of just watching what they did a little bit and how they operate. And it's really stuff that I feel like anybody with a little bit of mechanical ability can do. You know, once, look, once that veil of mystery is lifted and you understand it, like changing an airbag now, right. you, you wouldn't hesitate at all to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. Um, you know, you got a, a hydraulic, air over hydraulic jack to jack it up, some blocks to throw under there, a big enough impact gun to take, or you can just get a torque multiplier to take, be able to take the wheels off. Um, and I recommend a torque wrench to put them back on, but um, I mean, it, it, it gets, even just jacking it up and removing a tire to people before they come here, to them, that's like a big deal. But then once, once you do it and you start moving those tires around and taking things off, mm -hmm. it, it, and then everything's right in front of you once you do that, and it's so much easier. And uh, the radius rod bushings uh, for a novice, if you not see, I mean, 
if this you, style radius rod pushing don't if, let it if you've seen if you've seen us do it you would understand how to do it but otherwise you know we still fought hard i mean we we uh, how sore were you last night <laughs> oh I, I was so sore that i texted scott about 10 o'clock i got up to walk to the back of the bus and i I felt like I was going to keel over. He, he texted me back. He did the same thing. So, <laughs> don't feel so bad. <laughs> That's how it is. You're, you're super sore at night, but the next morning you, you feel pretty good, right? Yeah, not too bad. Just a little sore. But next time I see my buddy Dave and uh, listen to him tell me how easy those radius <laughs> are, bushings <laughs> are, the chains are not hitting. <laughs> Oh, there ain't nothing to them. Just <laughs> pop them right out and stick the new ones in and go on down the road. <laughs> if they're the old style, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the steel clad ones are much harder. They're not bad. It only takes you seven hours to get them off, and then an hour or two to swap them to 14 to really realign the accent and get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was, it was a big job. But put a smile on my face today when he hit those bumps on the bridge transition and nothing banged and it was just a nice yeah. nice little boom just a s soft air ride that wasn't a smile on your face when we were doing 21 mile an hour coming up the hill no I was not <laughs> smiling <laughs> from the person who I've watched go sideways up the hill at third in the dually yeah I was worried about him drifting the corner at the top of the hill <laughs> It's really hard to drift with the tag axle. Yeah. As long, long as you don't hit that pretty flexible when you come around a corner. That's right. <laughs> okay. I'm cold. You ready to go? Yeah, I think we're about done. Did, did Hank have a good time here? I had the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to head on back down to Arlen, Texas. <laughs> Get back to selling propane and propane accessories. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for the new song too, man. It's, we, awesome. we dig it. Yes, sir. I, I'm glad that uh, I'm just glad to be able to help promote what you guys do, and that's my little contribution. Um, sounds like I might be pulling in a few more bus people too to your channel, so that's good. Yes, awesome. Thank you. Is that one going to be available, like iTunes text? Uh, when I have time to get back home and look at things. I need to get into my accounts and see, you know, I, I don't do that often enough to where I got to relearn right. what I did a year or two ago. And then it's really not that big of a deal. It's just taking the time to do it, really. <sighs> I'm cold. <laughs> I feel like the temperature's falling. Is it falling? I don't know. I haven't looked. I've been watching the comments. <laughs> I know my bus is nice and warm, though. Yes. No, this it is, says it's gone up one degree. I don't believe it. The, the wind has picked up no, five miles. It feels miles like it's down to 43, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Thanks for bringing your bus in. Yes, sir. <laughs>